Hello everybody, my name's John. I'm going to tell you today's online Bible Club story. But before we have the story, we're going to have Tammy singing to us. She's going to sing a song we haven't done for a little while, and it's Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed. Now, not many of you have seen what mustard seeds look like, so here's some I'm going to show you. Can you see them? They're on this piece of paper, and they're really tiny. They're just not much bigger than... A little grain of salt, a little bit bigger than that, and they're tiny seeds. But when they're planted in the ground, those little mustard seeds, they'll grow to quite a big plant. And what that song's reminding us is, is if we trust God, even a tiny little bit, put that faith into practice, then our faith will get bigger and stronger, just like a plant going, growing. So, over to Tammy and let's sing. Right, so hopefully you enjoyed that singing. Now, let's think about today's story. It's about a man called Peter. Now, do you remember last week you heard about Peter talking to a man called Cornelius? And he was the one that said that the gospel, that's the good news about the Lord Jesus, could go to everyone. Not just people around Jerusalem, but everybody across the whole world. Even people like you and me got to hear about the Lord Jesus and the wonderful things he'd done. Now, those people were called Christians that told those stories, and their leader was a man called Peter, another one called James, and they were apostles or ministers or people who were very important. And at that time, I'm afraid a terrible thing started to happen. The king was called King Herod, and he was a bad king. He was nasty and he was cruel, and he thought he could get more powerful by getting rid of anything that was a threat to the Roman Empire. Any groups of people gathering together, not keen about that. And he thought to himself, I know, if I start to attack these Christians, then the leaders of the people will be very pleased with me and I'll be more secure in my job. So first of all, he took a good, kind man called James, who was an important apostle in the church, he arrested him and he had his head chopped off and that was a cruel thing to do because James hadn't done anything wrong at all and he had his head cut off by the wicked king and the church they were so upset they'd lost their beloved minister who'd been so kind to them and told them all these things about the Lord Jesus and now he was gone. It wasn't so bad for James because we had one hard blow with a sword and that was it. He was straight off into heaven, into glory with his Lord Jesus. So he was all right, but the church was left feeling very sad. Now, what was it that the church was saying that made people so upset? Well, these things are all written down in the Bible here. Here's my Bible. And when we look inside the Bible, we can see the things that Peter said. One of the things he said was, he spoke to the leaders and he said, You've done things that are wrong. You took the Lord Jesus Christ 
who was a good man and did good things and you just killed him because you didn't like him and that was an evil thing to do but if you say sorry and if you truly are sorry for those things sins of killing Jesus the Lord God will forgive you and he said that to all those leaders and he said that to the people around at the time and some of them believed him and some of them didn't and the ones who did believe him were called Christians and the ones who didn't well maybe they began to hate the Christians we're not quite sure but one thing that Peter did tell them which the leaders really didn't like was the Lord Jesus had come back to life after he'd been killed put in the ground his body rose again and he came back to life and he spoke to his disciples and encouraged them and that shows that when he was being put to death by the priests he really was making a sacrifice on our behalf and that's really good news it means that all of us can go to heaven however bad we've been if we simply trust in the Lord Jesus and Peter really liked that and he was telling all the people this as well as James and then a big feast happened this feast was called the Passover it went on for eight days at the beginning of the feast the king, the bad king called Herod, he thought to himself, I can make myself even more popular. I'll arrest another of the leaders. This time he took Peter, who you heard about last week. He had him arrested and put in prison. And he thought, the end of the feast, then I'll have him executed. Well, what did the poor people think? In the church, they couldn't go to the prison and get him out. Because he was in there being guarded by not just one guard, not even two, but 16. There were four groups of four soldiers and they watched him 24-7. So the people, all they could do was just simply pray to the Lord Jesus. So there they are. They're in a house. And the house was called Mary's house where they met. And there they are. They're in there praying. What they were doing was they were saying... Lord, our beloved leader, Peter, he's in prison, he's done nothing wrong, and we're worried that Herod will kill him, just like he killed James. Please, Lord, help. Now, I don't know exactly what they said, but it had been something like that. And they kept praying, they kept praying, for day after day, all those eight days, right through that special feast time. Now, sometimes, when things are wrong in our lives, if we really are Christians, if we trust God and if we believe in him, we've got a new life and we can pray just like they did. We can pray for people who are in trouble. We can pray when things go wrong. We can pray and ask God to help us. And we need to look out for the answers. Sometimes God answers straight away. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he says no, if we're asking for the wrong things. But these people in the church there, they for praying for a good thing. This is what happened. Here's Peter. Now he's in prison. Can you see what's happening here? There's two Roman guards. It's night time. And this time there's a strong iron chain fixed to his wrists. And one end of the chain goes to that guard and the other end to this guard. So he's all tied up with this horrible iron chain. The guards they'd gone to sleep because this was the last night before Peter was going to be killed but they knew they would wake up if Peter tried to move or escape if anyone came to rescue him because they would have heard this now here's an iron chain a steel chain that I've got can you imagine having something like that wrapped around your wrists and every time you move or you turn over you hear the chain clanking and it wake you up that's what the guards were listening out for while they were asleep. If they heard Peter moving or anyone trying to help him, that chain would rattle and they'd wake up. And do you see, they had a nasty looking spear, each of them, see with a sharp point on it. They could have maybe used that as a weapon if they thought anyone was trying to rescue Peter. And while that was going on, the people in the church were praying and Peter was sleeping. How could he be asleep? This was his last night before he was going to have a mock trial and then be executed. 
If I was in prison and I knew I was going to be killed in a few hours, I don't think I'd be asleep. I'd be maybe sweating and maybe shaking a bit and thinking, what's going to happen? Will it really hurt? Will there be lots of people there? Oh, I don't know. And I'd be a bit worried and frightened and upset. But Peter wasn't. He was sleeping peacefully. And the reason he was sleeping peacefully is he knew he'd given over his life to the Lord. He'd said to the Lord, I'm going to serve you and follow you and worship you. And he knew full well that if the king had him killed, that's all. He'd go off, Peter would go off to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus, a lovely place where he would see James again and all the other people he'd known. And they'd be really happy and cheerful with them. He wouldn't worry about being killed. He knew if the Lord wanted him to keep working in the church, keep telling people about the Lord Jesus and the good news of them, then he could do that as well. So he wasn't worried. He was so happy and cheerful that he could go to sleep at night just like you do, even with that noisy old chain rattling around every time he turned over. Then something happened. Remember the people were praying? This is what happened. There's Peter. He's still asleep. There's the two guards, they're sleeping, and here comes an angel. Now we don't know quite what angels look like, but from the Bible and what it tells us, it says they very often look like people. And this just looks like an ordinary man, but there's something rather odd about him. He's all in white and shining, and there's this light flash thing the artist has drawn around him to show that he's unusual. So he looks a bit like a man. He's going to do something very extraordinary that ordinary people can't do and this is what he did he goes to Peter he didn't wake up the guards he taps Peter on the shoulder and he says wake up wake up Peter wakes up he doesn't know what's happening he thinks maybe I'm having a dream or seeing an angel I don't know a vision and those noisy chains they just fall off his wrists they were all fixed on with those iron bands, but they just rattle onto the ground and the guards, they didn't wake up at all. The angel says to Peter, get up, put your sandals on, put your coat on. Peter did that. And then there's that iron door. See the barred door with another soldier behind it there? The door is the way out of the prison. Peter thought before he went to sleep, he'd go out of that door to his death. But what actually happened was the guards were fast asleep. The door opened completely quietly, all by itself. And Peter just walked out following this angel. They walked through the prison. Nobody moved or said anything. And then they got to the outside door to the street. Another big iron door. And that just opened all on its own. Peter walked out into the street. And the angel led him along the road. And then... He did something else that people can't do, which does show he was an angel. He just vanished. There was Peter, all on his own, in the middle of the night, in a dark street. What he thought he would do, is he realised he'd been let out of prison, he thought he'd go and see his friends, the disciples and the church, and he went off to Mary's house, where he knew they often met. It so happened that that was where they were meeting and praying. Here they are. That's Mary's house, and Peter thought he'd go there. And while they were there praying that the Lord would help, help them and Peter wouldn't be killed, Peter came along to the door, and there wasn't a doorbell, so he knocked on the door. Let me in! Let me in! And to the door came a servant girl called Rhoda. She came along to the door to let him in, she stood on one side of the door. You can see you can't see a girl there. Peter's just outside. And she said, who is it? Who is it? Peter replied, well, it's Peter. Let me in. I've been, I've been let out of prison. Let me in. And Rhoda, she was so surprised and so happy to, see, to hear Peter that she forgot to open the door. She went running back upstairs to the others and said, listen, listen, Peter's at the door. Peter's at the door, we've been praying for him and, and God's helped him. She was so excited that she left Peter still knocking on the door, saying, come on, let me in, let me in. I don't know 
don't know what else he said. Maybe he needed some food or some clean clothes or something. But they went down with her and there they are. There's Rhoda. She's finally opened the door at last. There's Peter. He's looking pleased. And they all come in and there's a big conversation. People are asking questions. How did you get out? What happened? And they're so excited. Peter asks everyone to be quiet and he explains in a few words that God had sent an angel who'd knocked off his chains, opened the prison and led him out. He'd actually answered their prayers and they were really happy that night. I don't think they went back to sleep after they'd been praying. They were so pleased to see Peter. And then in the morning they thought, well, Peter's going to have to leave this city because Herod's after his life. So they took him away privately to another place. Now, I'm not sure where he went after that, but the Lord kept him safe. Mm. And that wicked King Herod, in the morning, he ordered the guards to give him Peter. So the men went down to the prison. There were the guards. They'd woken up as usual in the morning at the outside. And they went into the prison and there was no sign of the prisoner. Peter wasn't there. Just an empty cell and the chains lying on the floor. And that wicked Herod said, bring the 16 guards here. I want to know what's happened. And he asked them, what happened to the prisoner? And they said, well, he's gone. We didn't see him go. Herod didn't believe them. He was a cruel king, remember. He was a bad man. And what he did was he had all those guards executed for something that wasn't their fault at all. That's how evil he was. But meanwhile, Peter had got away safely. And the disciples in the church, they now started to remember that their faith, maybe it was as small as a mustard seed like we've been singing, their faith was growing a bit bigger because they'd seen their prayers answered. And they were very happy about that. Now, if you've got a new life, if you've been trusting in the Lord Jesus and he really has forgiven your sins and you want to serve him and do what's good and follow him, maybe you need to be praying for other people, not just yourself. It's great that the Lord has forgiven your sins, but remember, there are other people in the world who are really in trouble. Now, I showed you this book earlier. This book's called The Bible. But in England, where we live, you're allowed to have one of these and you can read it. And no one will get you into trouble for reading it and reading about Jesus. But that's not true everywhere. In some places in the world, if you're caught with something like a Bible, that's really serious. You could get put into prison, you could lose your job, and some people are even killed in certain parts of the world just for having a Bible or reading it. I can't help them. I can't go to those foreign countries and get them out. But there's one thing I can do. I can pray. I can ask the Lord to help people that are persecuted or in trouble. And so can you. You can ask the Lord for help. And you can always ask the Lord to help people who are in trouble or being scorned, or maybe just being laughed at at school. Perhaps there's someone in your class that is a Christian and other children don't understand and they think, oh, they're just silly. I'm I'm not interested in that. And they laugh and mock and jeer. And it's quite painful and unpleasant. And you can help them by praying for them too. So that's the end of our story. Thank you for listening. We're going to pray now. So remember, when we pray, the easy thing to do to stop fiddling is to fold your hands together, close your eyes, and let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this story that we've heard. Thank you that you rescued your servant Peter out of that horrible jail. You rescued him and your people were praying and they were really happy to see him rescued. Lord, we thank you for the good news that Peter was going around telling people how they could be forgiven for their sins if they trusted in the Lord Jesus. Thank you that good news is still true today. Please help us to believe it, to trust in you for ourselves. Please, Lord. Wash away our sins and give us this faith, as small as a mustard seed. Lord, help us to, to grow our faith, that we'd be able to ask you for things in prayers and look for the answers. Help us, Lord, not to be so surprised like poor Rhoda when she didn't actually believe you'd answered the prayers. And Lord, we pray 
that you would do all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening, children. Bye. See you next week.